beautiful performance. Thank you. Um, I thought I'd begin uh, reading a statement that Yvonne Rayner wrote around the time uh, of the first performance. And uh, Trio A was part one of a triptych called The Mind is a Muscle. I think that's a nice paradox to keep in mind when we think about it. It is not, uh, sorry, it is my overall concern to reveal people as they are engaged in various kinds of activities, alone, with each other, with objects, and to weight the quality of the human body toward that of objects and away from super stylization of the dancer. And that's kind of interesting to me, because when I look at this, it becomes one long, continuous uh, movement, movement. And I have to start paying attention to how I'm paying attention to what's going on here. And um, when I read about uh, this, or when I've read about, and when I've talked with different people about it, it was actually constructed right, out as one long, fluid movement phrase that doesn't have many repetitions. Yeah. It has a few, um, but, uh, but not, it almost doesn't repeat itself. So there's nothing that my mind can actually grab onto as a significant or symbolic meaning outside of what's actually happening here and with me being here watching it at the same time. So I was noticing that my mind can't grasp onto anything and it keeps slipping. So I keep getting a notion of how <coughs> There's a gap um, uh, of my attention, what I can make out of the dance, and um, I can only come back to the dance and what the dancers are doing. I can't even like grasp onto like there's a personality here, and I'm going to pay attention to that virtuosic personality or presence. Um, I, there's not a, a movement that I can oh, that means this, or that means that. I mean, I can attach an association with it, but I notice that I am attaching an association with it. And that becomes really, really interesting, and I, I begin to notice about what my experience actually is of the present moment right now. Can I add something to that? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I just think to kind of riff off what she's saying, as a performer, for me, <laughs> it's almost the opposite experience in that the impossibility of just doing the movement or just being the body moving without the consciousness of grabbing on to the idea of, oh, I'm being watched, oh, what do they think? <laughs> and I think that's the work of this that I find um, challenging. And so it's interesting to hear the perspective of the audience and we have nothing to grab onto. And I feel like I keep trying to divert my, trying to grab onto ideas or thoughts. So I just want to throw that out there. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I was just telling you what I was feeling. I, I don't know. And it makes me become very active participant <coughs> as an audience viewer. Like, I have to pay attention. And I reflect on how I'm I thinking. I think in much of dance, the, the pleasure lies, you know, conventional dance, the pleasure lies in uh, recognizing patterns or recognizing repetition that is difficult or virtuosic, and this, because it doesn't quite have that, it's another kind of pleasure. It's a, in a sense, more difficult uh, pleasure where your presentness and paying attention is, is you know, more focused mm -hmm. rather than, uh, oh, I'm going to look for that phrase again, I'm going to look for that high leap or those kicks again. So. But and just one more thing, I mean, I think when you first start learning the dance, it's really difficult. I mean, some dancers from the dance department know that. And it's kind of like yoga, like really stiff people have an easier time with yoga than really flexible people, because once I get to know the dance and it becomes easier, I don't have to work at remembering the steps so much. The focus gets more difficult because it's not so much in the remembering, like, oh, what comes next? Or I have to remember that so I can't be bothered with the performing of it. But then once I know it so well in my body, then I'm faced with, okay, the mind wants to start wandering all other kinds of places. But it's built to be quite difficult, so the focus, I think, is on the, the, the sequencing, the actions, which are very complex. What was it like, your experience, learning it and performing it? 
Uh, well, I performed it. This is the third time I've performed it. Mm -hmm. uh, the first time learning it. I teach at the same university as Yvonne, and and that and she taught a class, and it was called Trio A and Ten Easy Lessons. <laughs> <laughs> ten weeks to the course. But when I learned it, because I'm also a professor and I have to be elsewhere, so I, would, I had missed the first couple of classes and then I had to miss some other classes, and it's almost impossible to, to learn something if you don't learn it continuously. And about the seventh or eighth week, I just thought, I'm never going to learn this. You know, it was just so hard, I was never going to learn it. And so, but I, I learned it, and then uh, we had a, that was, we finished the class in December, and we had a performance as a group of, I think, six people, three dancers, three non-dancers, at the Barclay at UC Irvine. And we rehearsed like crazy uh, for, I don't know, five, six days before, and then I performed it with these other people. Mm -hmm. And then in... Uh, so that was, I have to say, when I, when I performed then, I think I still couldn't get the pacing right. Mm. Okay. And then I was asked to do something pacing. for a performance festival in L.A. And I didn't have anything in mind, and I, but I, I told the organizer, oh, but I, I can dance Trio A. <laughs> and, and, I, and I asked Yvonne, what do you think of me dancing Trio A? And she said, oh, you should call it Simon Lang Dances Yvonne Rayner. Uh, because there, there's a famous conceptual piece called John Baldessari Sing Solo It. So I thought, okay, I have this title, I can't, I, I have to do it now. <laughs> so I practiced for about two weeks and uh, it was, it was hard, and then my friend Lincoln, who has seen Trio A uh, in New York before, he told me, you know, slow down, <laughs> you know. Basically, he, he gave me the extra <coughs> focus to say, okay, I have to concentrate on the pacing a little bit, mm. you know. So, and then I performed it, and, uh, and I performed it once to nothing, you know, just without music, and the second time, to uh, late in the midnight hour, which is one of the, it's it's, it's one of the, the choices music, you can do. It's the music that Yvonne has answered to before, and this is the third time. So mm -hmm. that's my experience. <laughs> <laughs> what was yours? Yeah, I have to agree with what you said, Carol. That I I started becoming as the, as the piece went on, I became conscious of how I was drifting in and out occasionally, that I would look at the cute little kid over against the wall. And when he, when he left the room, I thought, oh my gosh, I'm really paying attention now, which made me realize I hadn't 100% been paying attention before, even though I thought I was. Mm -hmm. um, I would recognize things that Sarah did the second and third time that I remembered her doing the first time, but I didn't remember them until I saw them again. So it was kind of like what you said, there was... You couldn't have asked me before it started, what's, what's going to come next or what am I looking for? And when I saw it, I was going, oh yeah, I liked that the first time. Oh, there it is again. I like that back and forth little thing she does down to the ground. But I couldn't remember it because uh -huh. it was so, I was fascinated by how it was constantly different. And I, and I kept playing a game with myself. What was Yvonne thinking? So that kind of became the lens. By the third time, that became the lens through which I was watching. What was Yvonne thinking when she had to keep going and make up something new? And and that was that was what it I that was my experience. The trio is about five minutes, and it took her six months working almost every day to make these five minutes. Yeah. And she uh, uh, she pared down a great deal. And uh, you know, one one time she told me that. Something as simple as when we are going like this, and the hands were originally the hands were rather stiff. Mm -hmm. And Bob Morris said, "Oh, you know, you're really paying attention to the hand," and she lessened it. So it was a great deal of refining uh, right. throughout 1965. <laughs> Do you know what she was thinking? Well, I just want to say too, her length 
There's sort of, I mean, I start to think every dance has its blueprint, right? Its language underneath it, and mm -hmm. that's usually not exposed. And having learned it and then having to teach it, it's been important for me to capture her language because it's very consistent. So everything has, most everything has a name to it, but it shifts from a reference to other dance forms. So there's a movement, I can't do it, but um, allow the ballet arm is one movement. Um, that's, she's, and every time we get there, she calls it allow the ballet, it's nothing else, allow the ballet arm, or the Martha Graham walk. Or sometimes it's counting, you know, when you're doing the head circle, you're counting the steps, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So there's a narrative for me that's her language that runs in my head. And something it shifts between references or counting, or so in a way I feel like there's a, a, a script almost for right. me that's her language. Um, whether she was thinking that when she made it or not, I don't know, but that's how she she transmits it to somebody else. Yeah. Are you transcribing that? Um, I have obsessively made. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm one of these dancers that doesn't remember movement. In, in dance speak, we say you have good muscle memory, and some people do. I mean, I can't remember a, a phrase I made a week ago, so I thought, oh my God, what am I gonna do? I have to remember this dance. And I can't look at the video, the film of her, because there's mistakes in it, and I can't read a lot of notation, so I'm just left with this thing. And so that's, I... That's really important to yeah, know. Uh -huh. You don't know this unless you've taken Trio A with Yvonne Rayner that the video is not the master version. <laughs> that's 1978, right? Yeah. That's 1978. Was this the video that Sally Baines yeah. Yeah. made? I mean, it was eight years after she had performed it and she had <laughs> danced it. So she, she says, you can't look at the video. So I said, okay, so... No, but the point of correction is not true. She danced it beautifully. And yeah. I about her in 73, when she did a story about Obunu and Jean Erdman, who obviously was uh, an important uh, performer in in Soul of Woman Who, but also in the film she had made before. That's a performer and a film, uh, and the film she would make after from that performance, Soul of Bad Woman Who. So in the performance, uh, she actually danced it, and John danced it next to her. And they danced it at the same time. But I saw it again to Yoe Adia two months ago, and also in October, and in the, in the way it was performed today, beautifully by you. Um, beautifully by Simon, uh, you actually don't start at the same time. You, you start first and when Simon step in after he's kind of caught around you and, you know, defocusing you and trying to disturb you in your memory of the piece, which I totally found, uh, you know, you, you don't do it as a unison. So I don't know if she did it for a long time like that, but it was totally integrated in that performance in 73. And I think at the time people who went to see the piece had seen Mine in the uh, Is a Muscle, you know, which was uh, 68, so it was known. And, uh, and I think when the <coughs> film was made in 76 or 77, she had not danced it for four years, but, you Certainly. know. Yeah. 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 No, it's, I mean, when I look at that video, I think, Yvonne, it's perfect. Why can't I just... Because, you know, I, I would rehearse with her and then I would go home and it's not easy sequencing. So mm -hmm. I, I'm no, just actually right. looking at the video and then I'd come back and we do it like this in the video. No, it's like this. It's not like that. And so the only way to solve the problem of remembering for me was to literally, it was her language then because I think that's the... That's, that's how she communicates it is through her language. And so I was just capturing it on these note cards and illustrating every movement and then like coming up with my own notation system and then I have about a hundred of these and I start looking at them, they're in little note cards and I was like, oh, I want to make a flip book. <laughs> pedagogical tool book and, uh, with, where you'd film someone doing it, you'd rotoscope it, animations, you could stop at any page, turn it over, <laughs> read the description, but you could also see it in motion. Because you can't stall it, like you can't arrest it, because when you stop it, it sort of dies, because the whole point is that it never stops. There's no pause. Um, so yeah, so that's my, that's my way of archiving it for myself, whether it's useful to anyone else, I don't know. Is it possible that parts of it have been revised at all? Revised? The, um, I, <laughs> well, <laughs> well, well actually... Is, could I enter with a story so I don't, I'm not really answering? <laughs> Pat Patterson, who knows it, 
and she's the first one to learn it. Um, I met her, we were talking, and, Pat, and I said, Pat, do you ever get a, a notes from Yvonne, and then she comes back and the notes kind of change, and she's like, Sarah, I have a file drawer. So she has a file drawer of <laughs> notes. She's like, she's like the obsessive note taker. So she has a file drawer of all the notes dated that Yvonne and all the corrections, and there are some shifts. Um, let's face it, 40 years or more is a long time to keep a dance. And that's the problem with dance. I mean, how do you preserve it? So yeah, I think there are discrepancies in it, if that's what you were what asking. Is Unambiguous is that she says the older she gets, the more precise she wants it done. Mm -hmm. So she's teaching it probably nowadays in a much more precise way than she might have, you know, 30 years ago or something. She says, I'm much, you know, I'm much more, like I want it to be much more, I want it to be much more exact. Mm -hmm. uh, so. But it was notated in 2006, I think. It was, La, uh, uh -huh. for those of you familiar with Lava Notation, mm -hmm. and I can only guess, and I, I know one of the women who notated it, Yalkia Kolov and Melanie Clark, um, that to see your work notated like that, to see it so precise with these symbols, and I remember she, she told Yalkia, she said, you can't notate three away, it's impossible. And Yalkia said, oh yeah, you can. <laughs> because it's one of the most precise, notation systems, and so I can only imagine when, in 2006, to have that experience and realize these people, it's so detailed that, um, I, I agree, I think over time, she has become so detailed in her teaching, it's so precise. Um, and she does these things called tune-ups, so once you know the dance, like if I go away to teach it, I have to have a tune-up with her here in LA, <laughs> which I love tune-ups, in a car culture. So I have to get a tune-up, and it's I'm approved or not, or she'll make, and it's an impossibility. I, ne I will never get this dance where I have a tune-up, and she's like, it's perfect, fine, go. There's a, and the, the impossibility of that is the is the dance for me, and is the beauty, and is the challenge that it's in a way an impossibility to transmit it. And when I'm performing it for you, of course, you know, we made mistakes. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. I just don't have the same quality I like. I made. So I, I made it. Mistakes. Mistakes. <laughs> so, yeah. It's essentially a dance that you can't repeat. Pardon? You can never repeat it. What do you mean? Because you're saying like you always need to tune up, so every time you perform it, it's actually different. Of course. I mean, yeah. Well, I think that's... that's yeah. I, I also think it's the nature of how it seems that this work has continued to have its revel relevance. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Catherine uh, Woods from the Tate kind of talks, as it, talks of it as a lived or a living archive, um, an addition of a work that is passed down from one to the next to the next. Addition or addition? Addition. So there are many additions of this artwork. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yesterday. Um, but it was interesting in looking at the video that morning, hearing Yvonne talk about it and the language that she uses, and then that language repeats itself. And that the language is so specific in mm -hmm. the doing of it, there's a comfort in that of like understanding, like, okay, that ballet arm, like, as opposed to like another interpretation of how to do that gesture, the ballet arm seems very innate in a body, and the like historical continuation of the vocabulary that she's used and the specificity in that is really nice that it continues in the same way through her, through you, through the people that are teaching it. Does that make sense? Well, I yeah. Yeah. The mediation of, yeah. of the medium, and it keeps calling attention back to the medium and the dance. Yeah. I think it's kind of special too. I was I, 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 Simon was talking before this particular performance. Um, is that I noticed that I was holding on to things a little bit differently. It was framed. Things were actually framed. I know when she was speaking to Carrie Lambert in the article that was written in October in 1999, she was talking about how uh, a traditional dance phrase uh, is is structured as an attack. 
a suspension or a stillness and then some kind of recovery. And it's built so that that stillness, like our eye, arrests on that stillness, right? And that frames the movement and that's what we're drawn to. And she was deliberately not doing that with this particular, with this particular work. However, it was interesting seeing it um, performed three times mm -hmm. in the way that it was performed because that ended up framing it mm -hmm. different, differently, right? Didn't it? I just, I love so much seeing it three times in a row like that because you were able to grab onto things and I, I found like my, my engagement with it deepened each time, which is such a wonderful infusion. <laughs> so it's one, it's framed by the dance by the dance. Do you want to tell us a little bit about this particular version? Yes. Okay. Um, <laughs> well, the first time I saw, okay, so through a, I should just frame it this way, first of all, okay. Uh, Yvonne first performed the uh, fragments of it by herself, and then the first people she taught it to were David Gordon and Steve Paxton, who performed it with her um, in, I think, early 1966. So it's been performed, you know, in various, you know, ways, and Yvonne has stopped making dances for a very long time. Um, around the year 1999 uh, 2000, uh, Mikhail was interested, he became very interested in Jetson. And uh, for, I cannot remember what the occasion was, but Yvonne uh, was asked to do a program at Jetson. So she, at that concert, she began doing this thing called trio A pressure. And what that means is that trio A is performed, but something else is added onto it. Something, it's pressured in some way. And the very first one that I saw of the watching part was with Yvonne dancing trio A, and Colin Beatty uh, was the watcher. Okay, so I've seen, I personally have seen this version several times. Uh, I remember it was at the Getty, I think around 2005 or so, when um, um, Linda Johnson was the watcher. And then I also saw, I think the same concert as the one that Babette saw uh, in New York last fall, where I think, Pat, I think Pat Patterson was the dancer and Yvonne was the watcher. It was so fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's almost using the dancer to look, yeah. to look at her, yeah. Yeah, which is obviously all the, the, the strategy of, I mean, one of the strategy of interpretation of your is the fact that the dancer avoid to look at us, you know, uh, as the audience. Mm. And what the goal is, maybe, mm -hmm. like what the goal of the watcher is mm -hmm. in relation to Well, I think that Yvonne is the type of artist who's always challenging herself. And she's also someone who interrogates her own motives, mm -hmm. right? So, in a way, it frames what the dancer is doing, but it also undercuts what the dancer is doing. And I think you find that in her work, in her film work, where she, you know, her quote, her, her way of framing it is, she's always interested in a flying one. You know, there's always something that undercuts the, mm -hmm. uh, the harmony, the easiness of something. Mm -hmm. But I noticed that when you were doing the watching, there were moments when it seemed like your movement was mimicking Sarah. And so it was like, just by, I mean, and that's sort of taking task-based performance to an extreme, and it reminded me of, I mean, even though there is some, we know there's some virtuosity in the performance because it is so difficult, that all of the movements are rooted in some kind of quotidian movement. Mm -hmm. You're very polite. <laughs> because I haven't seen Yvonne do it, but I can imagine Yvonne getting really up close. <laughs> like, 
because I was worried about it. I thought I'm not. I'm going to be so <laughs> distracted, but it was actually okay. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, it's in a way you become like an audience member. The same way I. Well, you know, it's like I have I have a task. Yeah. And my task is very simple. Yeah. She doesn't dictate what the watcher does. No. Actually, you know, she just whatever you, you know. It's no. it's 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 built in failure. You're not actually going to be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And she doesn't care what I do, mm -hmm. but I'm supposed to be just mm -hmm. trying to catch the gaze. I mean, we, we, we did a run through where she said, oh, you know, maybe a little bit less. You don't have to follow it every moment, mm -hmm. you know, so, because it's impossible anyway. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. So I try as hard as I can, but I don't, obviously I don't get into her face because I was actually interfere with the dance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. but, Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, what I did was just whatever was natural to me mm -hmm. you know, in trying to mm -hmm. perform the task. Mm -hmm. yeah. Have you ever shed the watcher? No. No. I have not. And I'm glad I didn't have to run around. <laughs> <laughs> but, I, but I also want to say, I don't know how to articulate this, um, and for those of you who've seen it live at other times in history or seen Yvonne do it live, I mean, I've only performed it probably three times, too, not so much. Um, I've taught it more than I've performed it. And as I was experiencing it today, what, was, what I was contemplating um, was, I don't know if it's called quality, but there's a certain quality and ease when you see Yvonne do it, especially in the film. Mm -hmm. And she also, we've talked about this, the way her body is built, her weight is very low. Like, she carries her weight low in her hips. I tend to carry my weight up in my um, upper body. And so I'm, I know the steps, I know the dance, but what I am grappling with is how to perform it because I don't feel like I have that ease. There's a certain other quality. So I think what I'm grappling with is in terms of um, how it appears or how it looks because I'm a totally different body. And so again, the impossibility of, of doing this dance as we remember, as we've seen it. So I keep looking at Babette thinking maybe, you know, what was it like to experience two very different bodies from Yvonne's doing the dance compared to when you've seen her do it in terms of... There was a kind of never effect between Jean, who is a little bit taller than Yvonne doing it, but obviously Jean is not a dancer, so uh, uh, it's a bit like Simon and you doing it together. There is a really interest in seeing bodies which have not been trained the same way. Mm -hmm. But because here you were never doing it, I mean, you were doing the same dance, but not at the same time. We, we had to work with the memory of the first time when you did it on your own, and Simon was on the side, you know, before he started to be the watcher and interfere with you dancing before he came to actually mimic you. But uh, so the, 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 the fact is, we catch with the memory of the dance as you danced it the first time. Yeah, yeah that's uh, all so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, the, 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 the fact is, you understood and he, he's. That moment, I have a photograph where they are doing that, and it's just the moment where you take your white right foot, you know, and you, you do that. It's a very gracious movement, and obviously Yvonne was totally good. It was grace itself, and Jean was a little bit, uh, you know, uh, awkward, although he's a very handsome man, but he does not move as well, you know. So he, 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 he had the charm of actually, not so much highlighting Yvonne as a great dancer, which obviously she is, but. Uh, 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 highlighting the, 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 the specificity of those movements, which appears so simple, but probably so complex when you think about them. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think when I teach it too, I remind, especially dance artists, um, that it's about the mechanics of the dance. It doesn't matter if it's like, it's going to look different on every body, compared, you know, at yeah. their height, their weight, where they carry their weight in their body, um, but that was the premise of this dance, it's going to be done by any body. But the mechanics have become so specific. So when I'm teaching, it's like, it's OK if it doesn't look in unison, right? Like a Cunningham dancer. And if you look at Cunningham dancers, the dancers' all bodies kind of look the same. Whereas with Tree Away, it doesn't, it doesn't ask for that kind of unison or that no, it's actually continuity. No, it's variation. When you see yeah. two people doing it on the same speed, let's yeah. say, yeah. starting at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. The variation actually is. Yeah, because just yeah. example, like when I you know, do the Katakali move. Yes, well, Yvonne would be, you know, so smooth, that. and I'm just like something else, but I'm doing it, but I'm something else um, because of the, the structure that I'm working with is a different one. Mm -hmm. But isn't part of Yvonne's, um, her effort to teach it to other people a kind of gesture of like, releasing the piece from the specificity of her body? And 
and then maybe it kind of acquires a, um, some sort of other existence that whatever is between all the bodies that end up performing it. This kind of blueprint that you were talking yeah. about. I don't know. That's a good question. Um, I feel like she's um, pulled it back in terms of the, the technique of it, like the technical, like literally the technical. Um, for instance, when we teach at UC Irvine together, um, she'll, we've done it twice. In the first year, she said, Sarah, we're going to audition the students. When they come in, we're just going to get rid of the ones that are so, are going to, because we only have 10 lessons. We've got to get through this whole thing. And there's going to be an audition. And so the first class, she kind of had everyone in the room, and she's such a generous person that she just said, okay, fine, everyone can stay. And then the second year, she did select. And so after the first class, she made a selection, um, because I think there's a certain rigor to it, and if you are going to get through it in 10 lessons, she wants it to be, she wants a precision. So I don't know how much it, it is about that. Um, that's a good question. Yeah. I feel like that's something she's known for saying. That's like, that's one of the things, the stories that gets told about the dance, is that she said, I'm going to get a democratic thing, and I'm going to give her right. thing. But this, what she's doing now, I feel like she's like, literally, with Sarah said, she took it back, she's taking it back, yeah. she's saying, like, it's not okay for it to be. Well, she saw one, she said, she saw one tree, one too many tree away she didn't recognize. Right. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> and that, that was just the point that I was going to make, is that I, I've done dances and then done them again 20 years later with the choreographer and thinking, that's not what she said 20 years ago, <laughs> you know, and you, you're like, did you, is that what you meant, or, and you just, you're like, okay, it's their party, and, and times change, and yeah, people have a different attitude towards something sometimes. If they're going to go back to it, there's probably a reason, you know, and so things can change over time, <laughs> and that's part of the, the glory of, of this world. I think... I find, it, I find it kind of keeps calling my attention back to the dance, to yeah. what is being done, you know, and that the specificity of it, it could exist on different bodies, and the very, it was meant for that kind of variation. Mm. But even her bringing it back to the specificity keeps calling it back to mm. the rigor of the dance mm -hmm. and the, the rigor and the intent that she had, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you know, in making it. I think the way one puts it is nothing should you should not exert any more energy than mm -hmm. what is required of doing mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. And it's different on different bodies. Mm -hmm. And I think one should also keep in mind that because I mean I I had the you know honor of seeing Yvonne dance it with Steve Paxton and Betty Slam, you know, who were mm -hmm. sort of generational people. And it's very different from seeing it on Steve Paxton. And <laughs> but I would, or David Gordon, I imagine it's very. I just, I, I never you never David saw Gordon David. Dance it. <laughs> can, can we do something really quick? Just okay. Just, I mean, it's a little bit. Maybe this is a pedagogical term. So we're going to be listening to that thing and just watch what we talk about. It, just from this, okay? Um, just from this. You just talk about. Okay, I have to. I have to do it. Sorry, I have to look. See, I have to look that way, okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's really here, and I'll stop here. Okay. Okay, so, <laughs> kind of different, right? And I know, we've been in the room together, because all ladies. So, for me, and I, I'll speak. Oh, I'm supposed to say this. <laughs> 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 you too much. No. <laughs> so it's, it's like, and it's very, very important. It's like, you know, if you go over there, that's wrong. This is fine. It's a lot of variation. Even like a moment of hanging for one second too long where it becomes aesthetic in a way. It becomes, like, it's over. And, you know, no movement is more important than the other. So that keeps it. No to uh -huh. moving and being moved. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, I think we would like to invite everyone to uh, continue the conversation outside. There's a reception right out the um, right out there. So thank you. So